Uh, in this video, we're going to look at uh, how to factorize uh, cubics, polynomials of degree 3. Um, so, we've got four examples here. The tool or the technique we're going to use or the set of skills we're going to need for this. The first, we're going to need the rational root theorem, uh, then the remainder theorem, and also synthetic division. Um, well, also, um, we are going to need you to be up to speed with how to factorize quadratics. Um, so for each of uh, these uh, uh, prerequisite skills, we have got uh, uh, videos that you might want to uh, look through if uh, you are not uh, up to speed uh, uh, with uh, any of them. So the first one, factorizing quadratics, we're going to post a link uh, on that one. Then the rational root theorem. Uh, in fact, before the rational root theorem, I think where you want to start uh, is uh, synthetic division. Synthetic uh, division. So we've got a video on this. Uh, and then the remainder theorem um, and then uh, the rational root theorem. So just going to summarize what uh, the rational root theorem um, gave us or, or, or told us. So the rational root theorem said uh, uh, the possible <clears throat> rational uh, roots uh, of a polynomial are always going to come in the form of a fraction. The numerator is uh, going to be uh, one of the factors of the constant. So one of the factors of the constant then the denominator is always going to be one of the factors of the leading term coefficient. Okay, so um, one of the factors of the leading term coefficient. Leading term is the term with the highest power. So that's always where we're going to start uh, when we want to use the when we want to factorize our cubics using the rational root theorem. So let's uh, get off uh, um, with uh, <clears throat> get on with uh, the first uh, example. So in the first example, we have got p of x <coughs> is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. So the two numbers, key numbers for this, are the constant, uh, so that is the constant here, the leading term coefficient, leading term is x cubed, the coefficient is 1. So those are the two numbers that are going to give us the set of possible uh, rational roots. So in the numerator, we're going to be looking at factors of 4. Uh, in each case, we look at the plus and the minus. So factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. So we work with plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. Factors of 1, just plus or minus 1. Now, since the denominator, the set in the denominator is just 1, it means the possible roots here are just the numbers in the numerator because if you divide anything by 1, you still get the same thing. Then now, we're going to use the remainder theorem, which says uh, if a number r... Um, so if x equal r is a root of p of x, then p 
of r is going to be zero. So then we're going to uh, comb through these numbers to find each um, which one is going to uh, give a zero if we plug it into the polynomial. We plug one here, we're going to have 1 minus 3 plus 4, which is going to be the sum of the coefficients. Uh, 1 minus 3 plus 4 is 5 minus 3. This is 2. This is not equal to 0. So the ones that are going to be useful for us are the ones where um, the answer is 0. <clears throat> this one is going to be negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 squared plus 4. It's going to be minus 1 minus 3 plus 4. This one is going to be 0. So what this is telling us is that uh, x equals to negative 1 is a root of the polynomial Moreover, um, if you take the negative 1 over to the other side, so you get x plus 1, then x plus 1 is always going to be a factor uh, of uh, the polynomial. Okay. If that's the case, it means we can divide the polynomial by x plus 1, and there is not going to be a remainder, or the remainder is going to be 0. So we can do that quickly using synthetic division. So in terms of the coefficients of the polynomial, for part 3 we've got 1, so 1 here. For part 2 we've got negative 3, uh, that's this one here. For power 1 there is nothing, so the coefficient is 0, and then the constant is 4. So notice when we do this, we are always expecting that this number here is going to be zero because we know this is a factor, so the remainder must be zero. Um, so that, that is good because uh, it means as we go through this, uh, this, um, so this is going to be negative four. That is going to be four, negative four. So this is like a safety check um, because we know exactly what we should be getting once we have got that it means we have got the quotient um, so if we divide the polynomial by x plus one the quotient is going to be x squared minus four x plus four this is now a quadratic which we can solve um, factorize using the quadratic methods of uh, factorizing or the methods of factorizing quadratics uh, we already referred you to our video which is going to can help you sharpen your skills there but that one is going to factor out to x minus 2 all squared so this uh, completes the first part of the question so we've just factorized p of x the second part is where we find the roots of that uh, of which once we have factorized p of x that should be somewhat simpler so for the roots we take each of the factors and equate it to zero and solve so this one for instance tells us that x is going to be negative one which uh, we already found anyway from here and then this one, um, if we take x minus 2 and equate it to 0 and solve, it's going to give us 2. By the way, uh, this 2 here is called the multiplicity. So if that is, so for instance, for this one, it's 1. So that means this one is a simple root, uh, this root here. So whenever that is 1, then whenever that power is 2, then this is called a double root or a repeated root. So if you like, it, it happens, it occurs twice. All right, so that uh, sorts out the first question. For the second question,
we've got p of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. This time the constant is 6. The coefficient of the leading order term is 2. So that means our possible roots are going to be vectors of 6 in the numerator, which is uh, the constant. Vectors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6, but we always take uh, the plus and the minus. Vectors of 2 in the denominator are just 1 and 2. So, <clears throat> I take each of these numbers and divide them by 1. We're going to get back the same set of numbers. So basically, that numerator is always going to come back exactly as it is. And then <clears throat> there may be extra numbers uh, like here because we've got 2. So if we divide this by 2. Uh, 1 over 2 is going to be 1 half. 2 over 2 is 1, but we already have it here. 3 over 2 we don't have. Uh, 6 over 2 is 3, which we already have. So this is the complete set of possible rational roots. Then we go through each one of them. Uh, we punch them into the function. So using... The remainder theorem, the one that is going to give us a zero is the one that we are looking for. So if you punch in uh, one, then we're just going to get the a sum of the coefficients 2 minus 3 minus 11 plus 6. The positive ones work out to 8, the negative ones work out to 14. So this is not equal to zero. Then when we punch in negative one, the first one is now going to be negative. The second one is still uh, negative. The third one becomes plus, and this is uh, still that. The plus numbers work out to 17. These ones are minus five. So this is not equal to zero. Then we go to 2. For 2, we're going to have 16 minus 12 minus 22 plus 6. So the negative numbers work out to 34. Um, positive numbers work out to 22. So this is uh, not going to be giving us zero. Okay. Then if we punch in negative two, this is going to be negative. This is still positive. This becomes positive. And that is positive. The negative numbers work out to negative 28. This is also 28. This is zero. So this is telling us that x equals to negative two is a root. Take the negative two to the other side, we get x plus two. So x plus two is a factor. So these are, of course, of p of x. And then using synthetic division, uh, we can divide the polynomial by x plus 2, so we're going to put negative 2 here, the coefficients of the polynomial uh, are 2, negative 3, negative 11, and 6. So that's power 3, power 2, power 1, and power 0. Drop down 2, multiply by negative 2, multiply by negative 2, it's going to give us 3 multiplied by negative 2. So this is telling us that uh, p of x is going to 
be x plus 2 into 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. So the second factor is now a quadratic which uh, we can factorize using those quadratic methods. It works out to 2x minus 1 times x minus 3. So that is the factorizing. And then if you take each one of those equated to 0 and solve, then you're going to find that from this one, the root is negative 2. From this one, the root is going to be 1 half. And from this one, the root is going to be 3. Right, so that is uh, the first two. Uh, we're now going to give you uh, this opportunity just to see whether you understand what we are doing. Uh, if you want to try these two, C and D, you can pause the video. And then when you press play again, then you can compare your working with our answers. Okay, uh, we're now going to scroll down to our solutions for example C and D. Um, by the way, thank you for coming uh, to our channel and watching um, our video. Hopefully, uh, this is uh, uh, useful. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe and uh, like the video. And uh, if you've got any questions, you can of course post them in the comments section. All right, so for part C, we've got x cubed minus 6x plus 4. So in terms of the possible roots, the numerator, we're going to have uh, factors of 4 and the denominator factors of 1. So it's just going to be factors of 4. Then we try out 1. We find that p of 1 is not 0. We try out negative 1, we find that p of negative 1 is not 0 as well. We try out 2, we find that that is 0. So x equals to 2 is a root of the polynomial. And then x minus 2, which you get by just taking 2 to the other side, is a factor. Then if we divide this by synthetic division, we find that the quotient is x squared plus 2x minus 2. Now, if we try to factorize this, you're going to find that it's not factorable. However, the roots we can still find. So if we get this to 0, we get a root of x equals to 2. If we solve, equate this to 0 and solve using the quadratic formula, find minus 1 plus root 3 and minus 1 minus root 3. Then if you go back uh, to this form, it means you can write that quadratic as x minus the first one here, then here x minus the second one. So those are the factors. And then for d, the possible roots in the numerator, we're going to have uh, uh, factors of 10 the denominator going to have factors of 3 then dividing through these are the possible uh, roots if we try 1 we find that p of 1 is not 0 try minus 1 p of minus 1 is 0 that means minus 1 is a root and x plus 1 is a factor so we can divide this polynomial by x plus 1 and uh, the quotient is 3x squared plus 13x minus 10. This then we can factorize using the quadratic formula. So the quadratic methods. And then finally we find that these are the roots. Now notice that all these numbers actually uh, belong in this set of numbers that we uh, determined earlier. Thank you.